Hey, what's up, YouTube? What's up, listeners? Uh, I'm here with Ted for our first ever uh, video. Um, so we're excited to do this. We did this for YouTube specifically because um, Ted's still recovering. So he can do maybe 15 or 20 minutes, we're thinking, although he does sound great today. Um, so what we're going to talk about is Ted's stroke and the the circuit, the events that happened around it, okay? Um, so Ted, where do you want to start? Do you want to start with the abduction the night before? Was well, it three nights before? Uh, I actually I don't remember. I, I'm I'm gonna say three nights before. Yeah, and you this was indicated how I woke up that that morning and I had a on my arm. They're not that visible at this time, but I point out. There was a row of three, four, uh, maybe five little uh, br l bruise looking uh, areas. And I found it unusual because they were not there when I went to bed the night before, but I get up. And also it was uh, a night that I had had very restless sleep. And if, if you remember, Stuart, I told you I woke up and feeling very angry. Yeah. Right. So it was not a normal morning for me. But it just so happened that uh, I had a doctor's appointment, I think, uh, a day or two after that. And I showed these places to my doctor. And uh, he said, well, that's odd he said each one of those little spots has a puncture mark in it. So that, that made me feel that whatever happened, that they came during the night and did something to me that, uh, that where they punctured actually maybe stuck needles in my arm there i'm i'm not absolutely certain this is just my feeling at this time about it uh however in time though the bruises healed and they they've gone away but Stuart, you uh i did send you a picture of it so you do i do have it yeah yeah so we I'll, have... I'll, I'll post it in the reddit group so people can see All right and and then the fact that uh it's very unusual or for me to wake up feeling angry and that that morning i got up want to fight with the whole world yeah uh, i was uh, irritated all day for some reason so uh, i'm just looking at these, these are indications or signs that uh they have been here yeah and um so with the stroke okay uh, I haven't really heard the full details of this either. So you were in bed and you were having a dream, was yeah. it? Yeah. A uh, highly unusual situation. Uh, I normally wake up around 6 o'clock uh, a.m. to 7 o'clock a.m. range. And uh, sometimes, you know, in the morning I'll go back to bed, but... Uh, uh, most of the time I get, I get up and have coffee and, and I'm okay. Uh, this particular morning, I did not wake up. I was an extremely like sound, heavy sleep. Like I had sort of been drugged and at, at 10 o'clock in the morning, I had a very vivid dream. And it was very realistic. In this dream, I heard my doorbell ring to my house. I get up and I go to the door, open the door, and there's a policeman, a local policeman that I've never seen before, didn't recognize, standing there. And he said, I have been sent to do a wellness check on you. All right. Dream ended and I jumped up out of bed and I thought, what? What, what is this? I even... Uh, I got up and, and uh, slipped on my clothes and uh, started going to the door to check and see if there was really a policeman standing there. And then I started wobbling and I was kind of like a drunk man. And uh, I caught myself on the door facing 
uh, I got to the kitchen table and I sat down and I was, I was just drooling, uh, uh, not to be crude, but slobber was just <laughs> rolling out of my mouth. Salivating. All, all over. And, and, and so I, I was so bad, I even, uh, got a dish towel and held it to my face and I tried to speak to, uh, uh, Loka, my cat, and, and greet her good morning, and I couldn't even say a word, and I, I I wasn't coherent, and I, I I did finally make it to the door, and there was no policeman standing there, and it was ten o'clock in the morning. I had overslept three, maybe four hours. Very unusual for me. Yeah, unusual, and so I couldn't do anything. I couldn't swallow. Uh, I, I couldn't drink my coffee. Uh, I had my morning medication that I needed to take. I couldn't swallow it. I couldn't get it down. I couldn't do anything. And I, it was like I was in La La Land or, or something. I, I felt no pain. I wasn't hurting anywhere. Uh, and, and it seemed like it was no time at all that, uh, my son comes walking in the door. I had no idea how much time had elapsed from that 10 o'clock until he came in. Normally he comes in from work. Now he lives with me. He and his daughter live in the house with me. Normally he comes in from work every day. Like he has for the last 12 years at punctually at five in the afternoon. He gets off for work about 4.30 and gets home about 5. At 1 o'clock, he comes walking in the door, and he looked at me, and he said, Dad, what's wrong? I tried to talk to him, and I couldn't even get a word out of my mouth. I was just quivering and shaking and, and drooling, and he loaded me up and, and put me in the vehicle and off to the emergency room at the hospital we went and why um why was he home early well in all the years he's worked for this company it's the first time it's ever happened right he, he was shocked himself he said at 12 30 there the owner of the company or their boss walked in and said I wasn't able to get the supplies for this next job. So all of you go home and be here in the morning, usual time. I'll have the supplies then. First time in all these years that's ever happened. Wow. You think and, there was some kind of manipulation there? Well, I do because at the hospital, uh, they told me that I don't know what they gave me. They put an IV in my arm and they, in, they gave me some type of fluids. Uh, they gave injected things into the IV, but the doctor told me that he said, it's a good thing that you got here as quick as you did, because we believe you're still having little mini strokes. Right. And uh, this will stop it, whatever they gave me to stop it. And of course, they did an MRI, and immediately afterwards, they came and told me that the MRI showed I had had a stroke, and it was affecting the left side of my face. That's why I couldn't talk. But they said, we got to it in time. Said, it's a good thing you woke up when you did. Yeah. Because they said uh, it could it could be very severe, and as it is, he said we think you will have a full recovery. It may take a few weeks, but uh, we'll have speech therapists working with you, and uh, we think we'll get a good recovery with you with this. So, what do we think? We think you were abducted. Okay, they did something to bring on the stroke. Well, I, I don't know that I would classify it as an abduction. I think I would call it a contact because I don't think that I don't feel they took me anywhere. I don't think they left my bed. I think they did to me while I was lying right there in, in, in my bed. 
That's my feeling. Yeah, okay. So they did it here. So you think that they manipulated you to have that stroke anyway? I do. Yeah. You think it was a message? I think it was a warning from yeah. the from the demons. I think uh they were warning me that we can shut you up if you don't voluntarily do it. Yeah, yeah. And but, uh, but then, you know, uh I it wouldn't sound reasonable to me that the same demons would turn around and send a policeman in my mind to the door to wake me up for a wellness check. And the very the the mere fact that he used the word wellness yeah. indicates, indicates yeah. something right here. So uh as a lady told me one time back in the 90s where Carla Turner had sent me to do a, a, a talk in East Texas. A young lady came up to me afterwards and she said, uh, Ted, you do realize that God is stepping aside in your life and letting these demons do all these things to you so that you, you will know firsthand what is actually going on so you can report this back to people like me. And, nice. and so I, 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 I feel Barbara and Carla felt that I was being protected by at that time, uh, religion wasn't brought into it. The Bible wasn't brought into it at that time. Carla said, uh, if there are good ones out there, this has to be them. They're protecting you. Yeah, okay. So uh, uh, I, I just wanted to put that in there uh, to give a full view of, of everything. Yeah. So on one hand, you've got these bad aliens who are manipulating you to have a stroke. But then it's stopped by the good aliens who uh, send you the the... The, the message to wake up and then maybe they arrange for Chuck to get off work early that day as well. Like who knows? That's right. But it's all well, very coincidental, isn't it? Well, if we, if we could ever get him to speak on here, he could tell you there's been manipulations of us, particularly me for years, as far back as he can remember. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Now, I was a bit concerned about putting up the episode because I thought, of, if, all right, well, you know, if they tried to stop him from putting up that last episode, it was the, the last draw, the one we did with uh, Herbert Schir Schimmer. And uh, so, Ted, I said to you, like, I'm a bit concerned about putting this up, you know, what happens and then no more Ted. And uh, then, yeah. Uh, well, yeah. you said that to me. Uh, and, of course, we are using Messenger. Yeah. Time and I'm holding the phone and as I was looking at it and I, I never touched the keys because at that time I had to lay the phone down and use my right hand uh, index finger to type with because I'm I'm doing everything at a snail's pace right then yeah of the stroke and as soon as you said this popped in there was put it up yeah i know yeah and it came up instantly as well right it came up instantly like like it was already planned yeah 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 and, and i i was i was shocked so was i, I. surprised me very much yeah yeah so uh that was kind of the message that we decided right we're going to put this up then um, the because I I I I done the episode I I'd, I'd edited it and it was good to go, but I was gonna give you the final say. So I, I told you like, you know the episode's ready to go. I'll upload it when I get home. Like you know, see what you say, and then instantly put it up. So uh, so that's uh that's the whole story then. That's the mysterious circumstances around the stroke. Um, so hopefully people won't think it's uh. You know, you know, with the recordings of uh, the Men in Black, with the like the telephone ringing and the pinging noises, I made a YouTube video and put it on. I, uh, all my mates think we staged that. None of none of them believe. Oh, hang on a second.
Can you hear me, Ted? Yes, I can. Sorry, my audio went there for a second, but um, none of them believe that they all think we staged it. Like, and it's not the case at all. Like, you know, we haven't staged anything. Well, true. You and I know that, but people that are not involved in our lives don't know that. And welcome to the clubs, Stuart. Yeah. I've been accused of this for the last 50 years. Yeah. yeah I'm used to it. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to it. People don't believe it until a lot of my close friends that I love dearly uh, think that I've staged a number of things in my life. But as as time goes on and, and they're involved in my life more, they realize that I'm not doing it uh, intentionally. Yeah. All right. Um, I did get a couple of comments. Did you feel up for doing a little bit more, Ted? Just a, a little bit more. All right. I'm just going to read out some comments from people, okay? Um, so. Sorry, folks. Two seconds here. Um, all right. These ones are well-wishers. So this one's from uh, Bear. He says, very sorry to hear. I hope Ted makes a full recovery. Keep up the good work. Sending love. Um. And C. Miller, 78. Uh, very sorry to hear the news, Stuart. This, Ted, this is uh, when I did the podcast update. And uh, Godspeed, Ted, sending prayers my way. Now, I uh, someone left a uh, comment on Redis, okay? And this is about the uh, Michael Schumer case we did. Um, He says, this is Comprehensive P304. This was a really well done episode. Ted Rice explaining what the tubes that looked like giant batteries were really for and how there is a very real chance that seemingly innocuous abduction of Her Herbert Schimmer wasn't so innocuous was shocking. Um, and I think people really enjoyed that episode. I've gotten a lot of positive feedback and it's just because we've got this case where a guy, you know, he has this standard abduction and but the evidence is there that something else actually happened. Uh, the cloning and the eating of the body, draining of the energy. Um, so I thought, like, for the next case, when you're well, Ted, I thought we might have a look at the Betty and Barney Hill. Would you Would you be up for that? Uh, it, uh, yeah, I'll give it a try. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's uh, a well-documented case, so I'm curious to see what you find in that. Well. Oh, there it is. What was that? No, 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 this time this is me. I didn't turn the phone off. Yeah, <laughs> that was your phone. But, you know, hey, when it's me, I'll admit it. <laughs> yeah. Let me turn the phone off. I forgot to do that. What is the pinging noise, though? What is that? Uh, That pinging is when uh, a message comes through on Messenger, on Facebook Messenger. Okay, okay. Are you sure? It makes a different noise. Well, I'm not sure. Is your phone still on? Uh, no, I just turned the, the uh, audio off on the phone. All right, turn it back on, okay? All right, hold on. Okay, it's back on. Okay. I just sent you a message. Just give it a second. See? That's the that's the different pinging noise. But then I don't know what the other one was. Yeah. <laughs> that's the other the other one is the one that keeps coming true. Uh, I have no idea. Well, everyone heard it anyway. We don't know what it is. Uh, well, I don't I don't know. It could be something I did here, but normally I take my phone and leave it out of the room in case I didn't turn anything off. That's yeah. my procedure. Today, you... I, I forgot. I'm a little uh, slow-minded right now. <laughs> yeah. Are you just assuming that the noise came from your phone? Like, did you get a message at that moment? No, I don't have a message. Yeah. 
See how strange this is, folks? I don't or, have I have that message on Messenger. Yeah, yeah. The one I just sent you, yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna head. Um like, subscribe, share. Um uh, me and Ted are probably gonna do these YouTube videos until he gets back up to to uh full strength before we start doing hour long podcasts again. Um so if you're go if you guys are listening on the podcast, uh I'll leave a link for the YouTube channel in the in the description. Yeah, well, I I want to uh, take this opportunity to thank to give thanks to uh, Victor Ochoa. He gave us a donation, and uh, we really appreciate that. Yeah, we do. Thank you a lot, Victor. Right, and and Victor, I used uh, that money to buy a webcam so that we can do this audio and i thank you very much it's greatly appreciated all right thanks guys till the next time okay bye-bye